Okay, we are rolling. And here's a couple of bullet points about me. I've uh, been making pictures for quite a long time, but professionally about 10 years, and mostly as a professional music and event photographer. But the most important part you really need to know is that this is not my 80s bedroom, but it could be. It looked pretty much exactly like that, and actually it's kind of the same now, it's just uh, slightly more organized. I'm a photographer, but I am first and foremost a massive, massive music fanatic. Uh, absolutely have loved music ever since I got that first cassette player as a kid. And that's the whole basis for everything that I do. I did, however, learn photography through uh, lots of travel traveled the world for quite a lot of years and did a lot of all kinds of photography, really. Just a lot of experimentation. And I kind of like doing that. I like sort of trying out and testing and learning all kinds of different things, which is actually part of why I asked for the GFX. I actually still do quite a lot of different assisting. I have always done this, and I still do everything from uh, movie sets to... Uh, documentaries, music videos. Uh, I work uh, doing camera and lights on live stream productions. Uh, that's me in the cartoons outfit. And I always recommend this to people. Like if you want to learn all kinds of different skills, just assist and help others because it's such a great learning tool and it's really fun. And you get to try out all kinds of different things. I have been using the X system for uh, actually since 2011, when the X100 came out, I switched to the X Pro One and using Fujifilm exclusively in uh, 2012. And now, the uh, the XT3 is my favorite camera. That I have two of those, and it's just for me, it's the really the the perfect documentary camera for all the uh, the sort of the action live event shots, especially the live music photography. And the reason for that is really, yeah, the camera is fast. The GFX is pretty fast too. I mean, I've used the X-T1 and that's way slower than the GFX. It's not really that I'm lacking the autofocus and other speeds on the GFX. The main thing for me is that I need to be able to make this style of pictures. I need to be really, really quick. So the size really matters. And the X-T3, with a small prime on it. It's such a tiny camera that I can hang over a fence, standing on top of a fence as I am here holding on with one hand and operating the camera with the other hand. So the idea about this fast camera is that it's actually making me fast. I can move really fast. I can shoot one-handed very easily. I've made pictures like this with the GFX, but in, just because of the sheer size and weight, the X-T3 is just uh, a lot more suited for it. So that's the best tool for these kind of pictures because this is really my, my style with these kind of pictures. I love to be so close that you kind of feel like you're going to get hurt. Like you have to be so close that you're thinking, how is it even possible to take you this close to the action? And you're right in the middle of this concert, which also means sometimes it's not going to be a technically perfect image, which I, I don't really care about. That's also not why I use GFX. It's not really the uh, the technicalities. It's pure emotion I'm going for here. Then sometimes we have pictures like this one, and that's basically a landscape picture. Okay, I don't have all day to make it. I have a couple of minutes, but in terms of a concert, that's that's like eternity. And this is like more like a a landscape picture, I have a bit of time to compose, and it's a much more sort of carefully composed image. And it's also a situation where I'm thinking, I really wish that this view was much wider. I don't mean wide angled, because obviously that's going to get wider, but a wide angle, as you know, the more extreme it gets, if you put a 10 millimeter on, it's just going to push everything really far away. And I don't want to push the band and the background far away. It needs to be up here and be immersive. I just want it to be wider. And we used to be able to do this. 
Because like you said, Fuji makes the most amazing panoramic film cameras. Uh, that's actually my uh, masterpiece from Copenhagen with the uh, G617, which is a beast of a camera. I actually shoot on a negative for transparency that's six by 17 centimeters. So that's an amazing panoramic camera, also like completely impractical. The TX1, however, if you happen to have one of those, I'd love to buy it. Uh, nah, I'm kidding. It's worth a fortune if you have it. We're never going to get digital versions of these cameras. Except when the GFX came out, I thought, hang on, there's a giant sensor. You can use this as a panoramic camera because of two things. The image quality is one thing because you're going to crop half the pixels away. So you need those, the rest of the pixels to be, well, plentiful and also uh, really high quality. But also the sensor size is really important. Now this is about the image quality and the size of the picture. This is a uh, uncropped 102 megapixels GFX 100. And as you can see, uh, GFX sensor is actually almost square. It's both, you know, it's a 43 format. So it's actually more square than your normal cameras. It's nowhere near panorama. It's actually the opposite. But if you look at this, I am obviously composing it with a panoramic view in the viewfinder. And there's way too much sky that's composed to be chopped off so that I can get to my end product, which is this. And this is the very first GFX 100. Actually, it was the only one in the country that I took to Roskilde and bathed in rain and mud and hammered it around the festival because I wanted to make panoramas. I wanted to make these crop panoramas. And this is two to one. There's still 57 megapixels left. And it's a really immersive view. It's not that wide angle thing where you push everything really far away. And that's the, uh, the benefit of the giant sensor. Now, um, this, this thing about the height that sometimes comes in handy because, I mean, essentially I'm also a commercial photographer. These always get delivered somewhere, not always for the amount of money that I wish <laughs> they could, I could get, but they do get delivered always to a client at the other end. And occasionally they say, can we have something in vertical? And there's just no time to shoot every picture in both formats during a show like this. And I love panoramas. It's just how I see the world. So it's, I, I'm just not a vertical shooter. I very rarely make pictures like that. But, you know, if you have a GFX file, because of the extra height, you can just chop out this. And uh, you have, well, if I can read my own screen, you have 30 megapixels left. It's still the uh, more than an X-T3. There's a little extra bonus you get from these files. I mean, you could obviously do the same from an X-T3 files. Uh, if you're using it for Instagram, it's fine. But, you know, if you're printing it, you might be, be stretching it with the GFX. No problem at all. Very briefly about sensor size, it quickly gets very technical. And the only thing I want to say is that it's a much bigger view with the same lens. This is important because if you're going to whack again an extreme wide angle on it to get this 90 degree view, you're going to push everything really far away and it's going to distort the image. Whereas the larger the sensor, I mean, a 30 mm lens is 30 millimeter. It, it's the same. It's just a question of how big a lens you put behind it. So if you put the GFX behind it, you can see that it's a lot bigger than the full frame and a <laughs> huge amount bigger than the X-T3. This means that you can make these cropped, beautiful panoramas that feel very immersive because you're at a focal length where it looks very natural and it's not distorted. And in this case, I mean, that's essentially shooting the background. The background is the stage and the light. I don't want to push the background away. Quite contrary, but I also like it to be wide. And 
Again, yep, that's why I wanted the GFX, because of the giant sensor, I'm going to throw half the pixels away, because there's no digital panoramic camera. But now there is. Because if you take this, and let's jump into this concert, the uh, biggest band in Denmark, the Mines of 99, and the biggest concert in all of Europe since Corona was uh, this concert. It maybe still is, actually. It was this concert back in September, 52,000 people in the National Stadium. If you're standing, you know, it's a football stadium. But I'm thinking I have to bring the DFX. It's like, you need, I need the panoramic view. And even that is nowhere near wide enough to capture a stage that's 80 meters wide. But these view views from the stage with the GFX, to me, they just feel more immersive. They just feel like I'm there because, again, you have this natural lens focal length. But because of the big sensor, you have the huge image. So I could literally crop this any way I want. And I want panoramas. Uh, I am, of course, still using the X-T3. I have that on the other shoulder because there's all these action shots. And again, I want to say I could nail this on the GFX, but I just much prefer the X-T3 for it. In this case, I don't need to crop it. I don't need all the other stuff. I just need to be really, really fast, but I also need to think and move fast, and the X-T3 makes me feel fast. And I don't know if there's an actual difference, but it feels to me it's smaller, I bring it and I run with it and I'm not afraid to let go of it and just use it one-handed. And then straight back to the GFX, of course, when we get these big, massive panoramas, this view of the massive stage. This is a great example, by the way, of all the, the, the image quality you get as well, the color depth and the, the details. I mean, you can easily see the people on stage. Uh, it can actually contain most of this insane dynamic range you have in these these concert pictures back to the xc3 because now i'm running around capturing the action and in this case i'm a little bit prepared because i've been part of the rehearsals too so that helps uh, i kind of know what what situations are coming and i've already sort of thought in my mind which camera i want to use and sometimes it's a good thing Sometimes it's also just nice to, you know, wing it all, but not when you have a once in a lifetime opportunity to shoot a concert, biggest concert ever at the football stadium. You'd like to be a little bit prepared. Uh, GFX shot here again from stage. And again, you can see, just check out the, the size, the catwalks and how wide I need to get to get this in frame, how big everything is, is by, by far the the widest, <laughs> tallest concert I've ever shot, so to speak. And that that made that's a huge challenge. And that's where the, the GFX really came in uh, very handy for this, this show. Now, I'm just going to take a sip of water. And uh, I tell you that I could go on for hours about this concert, but I won't. There's already a YouTube movie about this concert. You can see way more about it and many more pictures. I will instead click next and show you some hammers, which Paul already kind of mentioned and took away my joke. But anyway, uh, slightly confusing, but that's Thor in the red cape and that's not Thor with the cameras. And the reason for the hammers is that you have different tools for different jobs, and that's what they all are, they're tools. There's actually three different cameras on me, and as you can tell, the GFX on my right shoulder, left side of the picture, it's still pretty small. You can easily run around with it. And different hammers for different jobs, because I use the ones that are most suited to whatever I'm doing. There's also an XT30 with a fisher. And there's not, unless you have a, you know, Thor's hammer, you know, one hammer is not going to do it all. You have different tools and it's the same with lenses. So I don't always get this sort of thing about you need one camera to do everything. It's probably just going to be mediocre at everything. And that's why I'm using the GFX for the panoramas. That's what I want to use it for. 
it's amazing for that. By the way, uh, another great tool you need to bring, uh, good shoes and uh, probably some that are sort of uh, waterproof as well. This is gonna be your office maybe for a week, looking like this. And this is a situation where it's good to have the small cameras. Because I'm thinking ahead going, this is not really my shot, except I, I do like this picture, but it's a different kind of documentary picture. I am instead waiting and getting into position with my small camera so that I can make this one one minute later. And that's the beauty of the small compact cameras, it's not just the speed of them. For me, it's always also going to be a size thing. And then from the same stage, okay, not the same concept, but the same stage, the GFX is perfect for making these type of pictures, which I simply cannot make on the X-T3. If I did, they would be wildly distorted and everything would be pushed so far away, it'd be really dull. This is, by the way, a view that's pretty much exactly like the old G617 panoramic camera. And uh, so this one actually, it's actually kind of, a, it's a bit weird when you're shooting it. I tried to set the viewfinder to 16 to nine to, to kind of have an idea of what I'm doing, but it'd actually be really nice if you could just have a whole bunch of crop lines that you could set in the viewfinder. It's just to have a little bit of guidance. I mean, obviously you get a raw file. This has a lot of ceiling and a lot of like stage that I've cut off. So I'm trying to, in my mind, see these, these panoramas. And finally, one of the more epic GVX pictures I made at this concert with the Minds of 99. Also demonstrates again the, 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 the detail and just the, the colors and how good it is at capturing how great a tool, how great a hammer it is for these type of shots. And that's, that's kind of how it fits perfect into, uh, into my, my concert photography. Finally, um, I got a lot to say and not a lot of time, but we're almost done. No matter which tool I'm grabbing, it's not really about the tool. It's never about the tool. It's always about getting the emotion of the picture. I have to see emotion coming out of it. I have to see energy coming out of it. And in my case, you're transforming an experience that, uh, I mean, it's, it's a sensory overload when you're there of sound and lights and atmosphere and crowd and everything. And I'm trying to reduce that to a 2D quiet still picture. So everything needs to be a little more theatrical because really you need to hear music coming out of a, a still picture. You need to really tune your eye to find these, these moments. And that's also what I mean by Necessity. I mean, I don't, uh, I don't expect you out there to to find all my pictures necessary. Most of them are certainly not uh, necessary as such. But music has a lot of power and has a lot of power in uniting people. And for me, when I look at it, I I have to feel that this was a really like I had to make this picture. This was a necessary moment. This was. There's an intent behind, for example, this picture here. And that's that's really not all pictures that I make far from it. I uh, tick all these boxes, but the ones that I keep, and especially the ones in my portfolio, they uh, definitely need to take at least these boxes and maybe even, maybe even more. And that is really, no matter which tool I'm using, that's, that's just like, uh, yeah those things are the most important thing. Yeah. Finally, before I jump to my very last slide and we can have a few questions, uh, I have a website and I like to make photo essays and there's actually more than 700 of them on there and videos and stuff. So honestly, social media sucks for viewing photography. So at the very least, if you're gonna look on a screen, get a larger screen, 
look at you know essays, look at stuff like that, and go to the library, get books and stuff. Instagram sucks for viewing people, like, especially if you're talking about GFX and 102 megapixels. It makes no sense to view on a poster stamp. So there's a website, and there's a festival picture to end with because we're going to have festivals again this summer for the first time in three years. And I think this picture shows really what it's all about. It's just the love of music and the, the passion for music. And that's me. That's you, Fleming. That was fantastic. Uh, actually, when we're talking about that the festivals are coming, there's a question for you from Silvano. And if you only had to choose one camera or one camera system uh, size, uh, would you prefer the X-T3 or the GFX100 uh, for your job, uh, if you only could choose one camera, actually? Yeah, that, it would definitely be the X-T3 because, I mean, that's it's a perfect uh, all-around camera. And uh, I use the GFX for a specific purpose, and that's for adding a new tool, the big panoramic pictures, to my sort of my toolbox during these, the bigger shows, I don't bring bring GFX to the smaller shows anyway. This particular show is where it fits. So for overall, I would always just go with the, uh, the X-T3. I would always just take that. Yeah. This was great. Thank you very much, Fleming. You draw us through a tour on GFX and X system. So this is great. Uh, another hammer. Uh, explanation and that's uh, fantastic because you have another job another type of pictures but you worked around everything so I hope you got some ideas out there. Uh, there's some some questions I will actually leave uh, for later on because uh, when we're talking uh, GFX there's something about 50 megapixels or 100 I think we should leave that mm -hmm. to the end because then the, the four of you could actually uh, pop the, or, or, or answer that question. So I think I'll say thank you, 